six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother.
to your regularly scheduled program. Oh, thank you, Seth. I was, in fact, muted that whole time. <laughs> um, so let me start again. Hope you all are having a good Sunday. Um, we're going to do a little bit of painting today. Um, and yeah, just uh, just chill and hang out. I, uh, I forgot to mention yesterday that I wasn't going to do a stream. Um, I was hanging out at... Uh, Drew and Sarah's actually and we were just having so much fun that uh, I forgot to let everyone know that um, I wasn't going to do a stream yesterday so I apologize for that um let's see here before we get into the painting I got some new cacti or cactuses apparently both ways of saying it is correct but I got six new ones so I'll show you real quick and then we'll get into the painting so this is our first one. They're kind of they're kind of all I got some weird looking ones. This one's kind of funky looking. Looks like it's got like mini grapes or something on it. And I got new planters for them too. So that's our first one. This is the only really spiky one. This is like what you normally think of with a cactus. Um so this one was <laughs> This one was tough to transplant into its new container without stabbing myself a couple times, but it worked out okay. But I like that one. That one's really cool. Um, this one, it looks like weird. This this was like the by far the biggest out of the bunch. It, it looks like it has like these weird, I don't know if you can tell, like these weird kind of pipe things at the top like little openings i don't know what that's for but it looks really cool so there's number three and i do like to name my plants all of them are currently unnamed and here's another this one i guess they're kind of a little spiky but this one isn't like particularly spiky but still looks kind of cool it's little tube looking guys this one felt a little fragile when I was putting it in, so hopefully it holds up okay. This one has the coolest colors out of the whole bunch. It doesn't look as intense on the camera, but the kind of petal things, if I tip it a little bit here, you can see. Very red. This one's neat. I like this one. And then... Uh... Oh, excuse me. Hey, Valor. How's it going? Welcome. Hope you're having a good Sunday. And then this is our last cacti. Cactus. Cacti is plural. This one was shedding these little dangly things everywhere. And some of them are a little rough looking. But um, I believe these shipped all the way out from Arizona or... California there's a cactus farm and I ordered a bunch so but yeah did uh, did all the replanting today before I got on to stream thanks Seth yeah and yes Valor cacti um I don't know if you were here at the start but we got kind of like the more traditional looking ones and then this one might be my favorite out of the the new bunch I got six of them and it doesn't really, the camera isn't focusing very well, but it's kind of got these like little grape looking things on them. It's neat. But yeah, now I've got six new ones. My uh, my other 
three cacti are doing really well. So I felt confident enough to try and <clears throat> add some more to the collection. Reminds you of home. I can't remember, Valor, where, where is home originally for you? Um, it does not remind me of home <laughs> because I'm in Minnesota, so we have none of these here. But it makes me feel like I'm in a more tropical place, which many times is something uh, that I'm wishing for um, in these parts. <laughs> oh, California. Okay. And I actually do think that this farm was in California. I think that's where it shipped out from. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with the new additions. And it turns out that I'm actually okay at taking care of them because um, it seems like most succulents thrive on neglect <laughs> is what I've read many times. Um, so pretty much what I do is like I don't water them for like two or three weeks at a time and then just bring them into the bathroom, soak them under the sink, let it drain, and then just put it back where it was and then they're good for another three weeks. So far, that method has not failed me for my other th three cacti. So we'll see if it works with these ones. Some of these feel a little bit more fragile. So, but I don't think I can water these right away because the soil they came in were like super damp. And I know that that like I just got to let them dry out, I think, before I mess with them. Found out another thing, too. So you can kind of see little uh, palm behind me. So. I got it in the summer. Um, it's still alive and it's getting new fronds. So like the new, the things that shoot up from the middle and then they fan out. I'm getting new ones of those. However, it, it is like some of the fronds brown pretty quick. And I was like, man, I'm just, I'm not good at taking care of this one. Turns out that Majesty Palms are continuously marketed as an indoor palm when in reality they are very difficult to take care of inside um, and they are especially difficult to take care of in northern climates so that's why you can get them for $15 um, and I guess some people actually do just buy them as like a seasonal thing they'll pay $15 for them they'll just you know set them in their house or right outside their house and then they die and then they get rid of them um, so I feel like I'm actually taking a decent, I'm taking decent care of it considering it's still alive, it's still growing new fronds, despite the fact that we are not in an ideal location for it. So that made me feel pretty good. But um, we'll see how long it lasts. All right, so as always for this, um, reference painting is kind of, uh, top left there next to my webcam um and it, that is the horse we are painting we're making some good progress uh still got quite a bit to go um what, what was i gonna say i don't know what i was gonna say maybe i'll think of it later um but we got a lot of crazy colors to add in here um so yeah let's get cracking I think today, I see, just because it's easier to reach this one without flipping around anything. We're going to start with this number five, which is a little bit darker. A little bit darker color. It's kind of like a gray, black color. Um, <laughs> I have a cherry Jolly Rancher. Yeah, I uh, Kate bought me some some Jolly Ranchers because I'm trying to quit nicotine and it is nice to have things to keep your mouth busy while you're quitting and uh, because I don't want to spit sunflower seeds while I'm on stream Jolly Ranchers are a decent a decent option so that's what I'm going with and they taste good too so that's always a plus all right, so we are doing the number fives for now. We'll see how far that gets us. 
I, uh... So I was enjoying doing this so much. I, I've mentioned before that I I purchased three of these things. There's this one, obviously, and then there's the Van Gogh Smoking Skeleton, which is a really neat looking one. And uh, then there was also like a cafe coffee looking one. And this one I for sure want to do all on stream just because we started it on here and it's kind of fun to see the progress and that way we can do a time lapse at the end as well. Drew suggested that. I think that's a good idea. Um, but I enjoyed doing this one so much that I was like, I really want to crack one of these other ones open. This is way too wet. Um, so I did. I opened up the cafe one, being as we're going to use that as like kitchen decor. Um, and started working on that one in my free time. It's a really nice, it's a really nice thing to blow some time with and just uh, either listen to some streams. Why does my, why does this feel wet? It's not. Um, just blow some time, listen to some music, watch some streams. You can pretty much do anything. That's the nice part. You don't really have to. You don't have to think too much while you're working on these because it just tells you everything you need to do. This color is kind of... I almost wonder if I should... I don't know if this is going to help. I feel like i got to shake this up a little bit. This particular color seems to be... Maybe I just got to mix it. A little bit loose looks like it kind of separated a little bit from the assume there's got to be like an oil in there or something there we go I gonna say I lost my spot too that's better I also got to be better about as I'm kind of you might not be, you probably can't tell as much on camera. Well, you can kind of see, like some of these areas, the paint's a little thin on it. So I gotta be better about just filling them in right away because I kind of thought to myself, I was like, oh, I can just go back and fix those. Uh, but the problem is with a lot of these colors, they're so similar that I'll have no idea what color is, ac or what number <laughs> is actually underneath. So, like, oops, that's okay. I mean, it's not going to look perfect, but from a distance, most of the colors look just fine, but I made sure with my coffee ca uh, coffee slash cafe one that I'm working on that I do a better job of, you know, if I need to put a couple coats on a section that I do that right away. Just so it's a little more opaque and actually I think we can bump up a size here also been finding that it <clears throat> it really helps if you use the biggest brush size you can fit in an area because you get a little bit better coverage but I've been nervous about going outside of the lines too much <laughs> so I end up using like the smaller brushes for really big areas which uh, takes a longer time and doesn't, like I said, in the whole paint coverage area doesn't seem to be helping me all that much, but that's okay. This is the first one. There will be lessons learned as we go along. And there's nothing wrong with that.
All right. It's kind of funny from the angle I'm sitting at. It looks much better on camera, but the angle I'm sitting at with the sun coming in through the window, a lot of the, with the sun, uh, you know, the glare from the sun, a lot of these colors start to kind of just blend together, and it looks like I'm painting the exact same colors, especially a lot of these darker ones. All kind of, all kind of end up looking the same from a certain angle. It makes me confused because I feel like I'm painting the wrong thing. got a couple of uh, interesting things coming up probably in the next couple of weeks here depending on how fast the mail is I know that we'll probably have a little bit of a slowdown with the holiday rush which is okay but um, got a couple of things recently that I'm waiting for one of them is a f new Switch tablet, which I'm excited for. Now, the reason I'm getting another one, there is nothing wrong with my current Switch. However, as some of you may know, with Animal Crossing, if you want to start a new island on your existing console... You either have to, well, you, you don't have an option. You have to delete it. You have to delete your island. You can't have multiple islands. You get your one and that's it. Um, and I've, you know, I, I am burnt out on Animal Crossing, but something that I've thought about that would be fun to get back into it is to, like, make theme islands. And I've been mulling doing that for a while. And I was thinking about deleting my current Animal Crossing island and just starting over. I thought, you know, I've put like 700 hours into this island. And I, I was having a hard time making the decision to just delete it. But it turns out on eBay... You can buy just the Switch tablet instead of like, you know, a whole brand new Switch um, that's refurbished. And the nice thing is that I, I'm not, I'm saving a little bit because it's refurbished and also because it's coming with just the tablet and nothing else. Because I already have everything else. I don't really need a new dock or anything like that. Um, but I got that for a decent price. And so once that's in... I'll need to obviously get another copy of Animal Crossing, but um, we can start working on themed islands. So that should be fun. I'd like to kind of maybe put stuff up for votes. That would be kind of fun. Uh, but I already have an idea for the first one. That's already kind of in the works. But yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. It should be fun. I think that'll make it feel a little more fresh to have something, you know, a project to work on. Making some fun themed islands. And the nice thing too is once we're done with the island, 
Um, I don't know how the rules with uploading dream addresses work because I have to be honest, I've never done it, not even for my own current island. Um, I don't know if the dream addresses go away once you delete an island or if they're just there, like it just saves the code and takes an image of the island and it's just there. But either way, we can like upload it for a while. And then once we want to do a new island, we'll just delete it on that second switch and start fresh. But I think that'll be a fun, fun thing to do. That way we'll get in a little bit of Animal Crossing again. I know that a lot of folks miss the the game shows. And there's a part of me that misses them too. It's just, it's so hard running them all the time. Like it's, it's kind of exhausting. Um, and a lot of it comes from just like getting mentally drained because I always felt the need to come up with new game ideas to keep things fresh. I mean, of course, I went back to the well plenty of times with games that were already successful, like Gold Digger. I mean, that was always a popular one. People were always excited. And, you know, the nice thing was you could do little variations on the main rules, which I kind of did towards the end of the, the game shows. But, yeah, it gets kind of mentally... Mentally exhausting, thinking up new games every week and rearranging your island. And on top of all that, you know, I was having to spend so much time on the turnip exchange to fund all this stuff. I mean, for, for a week where it was a brand new game show that I was rolling out, figure... Probably took me like on the very low end. So this is like a conservative estimate. On the very low end, it probably would take me two to three hours to kind of brainstorm and conceptualize a game. Some, you know, sometimes it could be a little bit shorter if it was a simple game, but I would say around that amount of time. And then running around, usually on Nook is on to get all the stuff I need, because rarely did I have all the stuff I needed for the show. Um, and then I'd probably spend a good four or five hours of time selling and buying turnips to fund the game. Um, a couple hours to set up a, you know, clear some space to create a set. Another hour or two to play test stuff. It was busy. I mean, it was busy... A busy thing to do essentially just like a something I would maybe do a couple of times but that's why I haven't done those in a while but I think it'll be fun to do island theming at some point in time in the next couple of weeks here I also have a couple of ideas for just chatting streams which I haven't really rolled out yet I've talked about some of them a little bit on the discord I think oh, the brush is too wet. Um, I think mostly on the, the sub only chat, but yeah, I don't know. Sometimes my ideas are better in my head, and then I start working through what it would actually take to do it, and uh, I'm hit with a bit of reality. I have to wheel back a little bit until I can work through some problems in my head. Not that it's like super advanced stuff we're doing, but I like to run, you know, entertaining streams and yeah, as much as I, I can within my skill set. And um, so I consider things like that when I'm when I'm trying to do. Oh, I got close to the can there. Um, so I, I consider things like that when we're trying out new streams. And if I feel like I don't have something that would be up to my standards, I'll kind of just shelf it until I can, uh, you know, workshop it a little bit or...
And I know it's a small stream, so, you know, we shouldn't take things maybe too seriously, but I do, I do take pride in my work and want to make sure that it's entertaining for everyone. So I don't like to rush things out as much as possible. <laughs> I've certainly rushed some game shows in the past just to get something out there. That's for sure. But. Live and learn. But man, I, I've been... I was chatting with uh, Drew and Sarah this weekend because I was hanging out with them. And uh, it's tough coming up with like a, a schedule of things you want to do. You know, you only have a certain amount of days in the week you feel comfortable streaming. And there's so many good games coming out. You know, you got Cyberpunk coming up. Um, there's a couple of games on Game Pass that have piqued my interest. I learned about a game yesterday. <laughs> In another Discord server that I'm a part of, that it is a raccoon who rides a longboard, and it's all kind of like lo-fi music and stuff. And I was like, man, you got to play that one on stream. That's just it. When do you find the time? <laughs> when do you find the time? And I kind of found out with the whole coffee talk, uh, night in the woods. Loved both of those games, by the way. But it gets a little hard for me to try scheduling things when I've got, like, one longer game going, which at this point, I guess I would consider that to be Pokemon. One longer game going, and then, like, several small games. And it's like, ugh, like, what, what do I put on what day? Um, and it just kind of gets a little confusing to keep track of all that. Welcome, Catherine. How are you doing this fine Sunday? I uh, was in for a while on Justin's stream yesterday, and I was, uh, was very impressed with the work done on the, the rebranding. I thought it was uh, brilliant work. I'm very impressed with how that all came together. And welcome, Justin. Speaking of which, what's this longboard raccoon? Um, yeah, Justin, there's a... Oh, shoot, I'm trying to think of the name. Ooh, yikes. Um, I'll have to put it in the Discord. Uh... <laughs> gonna have to rebrand to Mrs. Justin Parable next. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe he hadn't considered that with this whole rebrand. The, uh, the stress you would be put through <laughs> to have to change your username as well. Um, uh, but yes, there is, I'll have to look up the name because it's like a $15 game on Steam. But um, there's another server I hang out in, and they were they were kind of having a conversation about how it, it's really hard to finish games recently because there's just so many games coming out. On top of if you're a streamer and trying to decide what you're gonna fit into your schedule, um, and someone randomly brought up this game. It's like a fifteen dollar game on stream, and the whole concept is it's a um, it's a raccoon, or it might be a tanuki, but it, I think the game has raccoon in the title. But it's just a raccoon who rides a longboard. And, uh, it's very, like, it's lo-fi themed. Kind of, like, retro looking, and I was like, man. This has me written all over it. I didn't realize they made games for specific people, but if they did, they made one for me, apparently. So, we're gonna have to... <laughs> We're going to have to clear up some space on the schedule to, to fit that one in at some point in time here. <laughs> Taking notes for me, it's, it's raging. Uh, 
Did you use Raging Janitor in your mixer days? I did, Justin. That was, uh, that was in fact my, my username over there as well. Um, and you know what? I think, oh gosh, what was the issue? <gasps> no. Oh, I'm trying to think. Did I use Professor Cynic or did I use, I think I used Raging Janitor. Yes, I did, I did, because I remember using, like, a little bit of the skull branding. And that would make sense. So, yes, that is, that was the moniker I went by uh, back in, in those days. Mixer wasn't a bad platform. It was, it was pretty nice. The one thing that was, now, I didn't use the functionality because I liked doing overlays and stuff, but because it was a Microsoft product, you could stream directly from your Xbox. So you could just... Yeah, there was like an option within the Xbox menu to start streaming, which was kind of neat at the time. And... I, I think it was a good enough platform that it really boggles the mind that they dumped all this money into bringing Ninja over you know, and a couple of other bigger streamers. Can't remember all of them. But they dumped all this money into bringing them over. And then they're just like, nah, never mind. <laughs> it's like, are you telling me Microsoft couldn't take the financial hit to try and be a competitor? And of, of course they are going to be smaller, but they I think they were definitely taking some market share out of, from Twitch. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Um, Drew and Sarah told me to do it. Oh, yeah, the username. How uh, are, is longboarding off the cards for you through winter? Technically, I could be doing it now. Um, I would say, and I want to say Drew was telling me this. Like, our temperatures have been pretty above average. Like, right now looking outside we don't have like except for like a little bit jammed into like the gutters of streets we have no snow on the ground um i think when i left today it was maybe in the mid 30s which for us is pretty pretty warm for december I, and i i keep thinking we're in november but we're not um it's pretty warm for us so I could still go out if I, if I, to answer your question, if I, if I, uh, wore a sweatshirt, I could definitely go out now to just find the motivation. <laughs> uh, it, it's really odd with, well, I'm sure some people can relate to this, but when it comes to me and physical activity, once I get into the groove of doing it, I don't need to convince myself to do it. And I'm excited to do it depending on the activity. So like with longboarding, uh, when I was doing it this summer, I was excited to do it. So it wasn't really like I had to convince myself to do anything. But now that I've been off of it for a while, now I'm like, huh, I gotta go and work out. Even though I know if I went and did it right now, I'd have some fun. So maybe I'll have to try after stream and report back how it is. Because I, I have not longboarded when it's this cold out before, but I certainly could. The trail is still clear. It is doable, for sure. Uh, the thing is, the backend tech has other applications. They kept that for... Oh, sure, yeah. It's weird how Xbox is more robust with Game Pass or Bethesda when it's more and more detached from their core business. Yeah, um... Uh, Drew and I were talking again this weekend, like... Game Pass is such a good service, and Drew's kind of theory on, you know, this whole the new console generation that just released here, um, you know, everyone is saying, you know, Sony's going to have the better games, yada, 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 which, to be fair, they, I, I would agree, they do have the better exclusives, for sure. You know, they got God of War, The Last of Us. So on and so forth. There's other ones too. Uh, 
it's Horizon Zero Dawn in there, maybe. Can't remember. Anyway, but Microsoft has Game Pass, which is just, in my opinion, the best gaming library service out there. I have saved so much money uh, by using that service. Like, for real, man. I, you know, I would say... Why'd the music stop? I'd say maybe in an average year, I'd buy anywhere between five to maybe on the upper end, eight AAA titles. I'll buy one or two now. <laughs> I, I guess, and it's all depending on what comes out, but um, like perfect example. Um, I was really excited about this game that was developed by an Xbox for uh, an X sorry, Microsoft-owned studio called Void Bastards. It was coming out as a full, you know, uh, AAA game, pricing-wise, anyway. Came out on the Game Pass day one. Didn't have to spend the $60. I just paid my monthly fee. I got to play a AAA title out of the gates, and I had a lot of fun with it. Like I'm, I still had a great experience, and I didn't have to pay much either. Um, there's no snow in the forecast. Winter has seemed to shift. It lasts longer into the spring now. That is true. Uh, given that Xbox is for PC too now, the incremental improvements between console generations are so tiny, and the profit margins on machines are zero. Sub models. Uh, Submodel seems uh, the way to future-proof it, compete with Steam. Thing is, I never touched my Xbox maybe a couple of times in three months. Um, yeah, and Drew, Drew was mentioning the exact same thing, Justin, where he's like, you know, they... Well, and it is the same for Sony in so much that consoles are not... Um, money makers it's what you buy with the console the games and, and such um but the cool thing with with microsoft now so so we've got game pass um it might seem like a bad thing but like drew and i have no particular drive to go and buy the new xbox which might seem like a bad thing but here's the deal we're still in Microsoft's pocket because um, when we're ready to make the upgrade, we'll, we'll, you know, buy the new Xbox. But until then, we're still paying them, like, whatever it is, like $15 a month for their gaming service. Um, and that way, they're just kind of getting, like, guaranteed income from us. I've always been kind of curious, though, if Game Pass is a good deal for developers, because that's always kind of been my worry with moving to some of these models where you don't really own the games anymore. Um, I do know that Epic seems to give bigger shares, bigger cuts to their developers. Not when I say their developers, I mean developers who decide to release games on their platform. Um, than Steam does. So that's a positive. And I know that people were initially very upset about the Epic Game Store because they're like, oh, I don't want to have my library in two places. But it's better for developers because there's competition now. And I do not feel bad at all if a developer decides to do like an exclusivity thing for a while with Epic if they're going to pay more. Make that bread. You worked hard on that game. You deserve to make some money from it. Um, and if that's at the cost of a little bit of convenience for the consumer, so be it, in my opinion. Um, the thing is... Oh, wait, I read that already. Only touch your Xbox a couple times in three months. Um, have you ever looked at any of the indie titles, Justin? Because they're, they actually do have a decent amount of indie games on there. Like, that's where I found... Uh, a night or night in the woods. There's this game I mentioned in the Discord called Haven. 
that's an RPG. I don't, th I don't think that, um, it's necessarily an indie title, but it looks very fun. Epic is 12% rather than 30. So they're less? I thought they were more. Interesting. Oh, I see. Sorry, I see what you mean. Epic takes a 12% cut versus Steam's 30. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. I, You were right. <laughs> I read that wrong. <laughs> Which is great. I'm just fed up with the epic PR that they're leading a revolution when they just want to be in a position to charge 30 themselves. I mean, that's all it comes down to, right? Like they're they're gonna roll with the good PR to try and snake some market share. But I mean, they're they're a big business. Like once the opportunity is present for them to start taking a bigger cut without a huge impact on PR, you know damn well they're going to do it. Of course they are. But to me in the meantime, if um some smaller if it means some smaller companies get to make a little bit more money for their hard-earned pieces of work, I'm for it. I have far too many things going on in my head that I want to complete, but the other day I was doing a little bit of pr uh, preliminary research to see how feasible it would be to create a dungeon crawler in Unity. I'd really like to get my feet wet and just try, even if I just made like a little demo game, you know, just to, just to try out some programming and see what I can accomplish. I'd, I'd really enjoy that. And it does seem like Unity is a pretty... F I know it gets a bad rap, but a lot of really good games have been made in Unity. And I think part of it comes down to, like, it's easy to make shovelware in Unity. But if I'm just making a game for my own purposes to just play around with it, I'm not going to release it. Um... And if I ever were to create a game with the intention of releasing it, I wouldn't want to make shovelware anyway. I would want to... Because I... I'd want to make something that I'm happy with because... I hold video games to a high standard. I think they're not appreciated the way they should be. Which is part of the reason why I have um, a strong liking for retro games. No, oh, because Justin, you you play a lot. You know, I play some indies as well, but you kind you focus a lot on the indie games, which I like. Um, you know, because you have good conversations about the games, and you know it. You know, kind of reinforces that whole conversation that video games are art and they're. Uh, a medium worth being celebrated. I like retro games for the historical piece. Um, video games have been out for long enough now that I feel like it's hard to deny that they're part of our history. And that's why I like to revisit those. Because um, you know, in a way it can kind of tell you a little bit about the times based on what was being created. Um... It only gets a bad rap as the free tools require the Unity logo to be up front, the paid ones 
used by better finance devs don't yes yep you're absolutely right yeah because they yeah if you have that free version or whatever yeah you have to have the made in unity which i'm curious the decision making behind that because i have seen some bigger games that still say maybe not as like loud but it still says made in unity so i'm curious how that decision is made but yeah it, i know that uh jimbo was you know talking about unity for a while i can't remember exactly what his opinions were if it was kind of similar where it's like unity isn't in and of itself a bad thing. It's just the people who create shovelware with it um, give it a bad rap. I, I feel like that was his thoughts on it, but it's been a while. I really need to watch some of his content. It's been, it's been far too long. I really enjoy his stuff, but that's kind of how it is for all of my creator-type content that I watch. I... I go through phases <laughs> where I'll really have a hot kick for one of them for a while and then I'll fade out and then I'll come back in. I you don't uh or sorry I, you don't know when you're playing a good unity game yeah exactly did you ever listen to that podcast with the slaughtering grounds oh are you talking are you talking about his interview with one of the guys who was responsible for that is that what you're referring to Yes, that is what you're talking. Yeah, 45 minutes of two people who fucking despise each other. Some of Jin's funniest moments. Um, you know, I I have to be honest. I never sat through the entire thing. Of course, I've seen Jim's kind of historical piece about that feud many times on his channel. And, you know, he, he includes bits and pieces of that interview on there. But I really should just listen to the to the whole thing and that saga was just something else man <laughs> like that guy like just some of the stuff that he tried pulling was hilarious like i feel bad for jim you know because as he said like it's very stressful when you're anytime you're involved in like some legal business like that um but man like I felt like it had to at least give him a little bit of comic relief to deal with some of this stuff. And I can't, I can't imagine what his lawyer thought as he's receiving some of these requests from those, those guys. Um, it was that dev that sued him for a million dollars. Yes, yes, Digital Homicide. Yep, that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> One of my favorite moments in his, like, uh, kind of recap of that situation was that I, I want to say, <laughs> like, maybe some of the counts were for libel or... Uh, I can't exactly remember. But at one point in time, he, he references something Jim said, and he said something to the effect of, like, there's not enough popcorn in the entire world to sit through this. And so Jim's lawyer followed up with, we can't prove we, that we can't prove that. We can't prove that there's enough. So it's not an incorrect statement. <laughs> or it was something like that. And I was like, that, 
That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> that makes me laugh. It's mostly Jim cackling at the accusations being made. That's kind of what it seemed like in his recap. Yeah, he's... And I feel like he did... At least in the parts I saw of it. Like, he gave this dude f fair chances. Like, he, you know... It's not like Jim didn't give him a chance to try and defend himself. It felt like... A level playing field other than the other guy was a dope and <laughs> Jim's a pretty pretty intelligent guy I would say um, so in that respect it was not an even playing field <laughs> intellectually speaking but not much you can do to level that Some of my, uh, believe it or not, some of my favorite content of Jim's is his Boglin stuff. I think they're a very neat toy. I'm not really about them myself, but there's just something about watching someone who's really passionate about something they enjoy and something that's fairly unique like boglins it just makes for good just makes for good entertainment in my opinion i love people with weird collections i mean one of these days i might be known as the vhs guy <laughs> i'm the guy with a weird collection it wouldn't be so weird if it was just vhs tapes but the fact that i try to find really fucked up ones might make it <laughs> a little more niche. Although I know I'm not the only person who does that. There's plenty of, like, found footage enthusiasts. Which I guess mine are less found footage and more just bizarre things, but... I did end up, so... I kind of went on a... A VHS spree this last week, and I got, I think, four or five new tapes. And I got some excellent news today. Uh, yeah, because most of these are just buy it nows, so you don't have to bid. You know, they sell the tapes for a couple dollars, and <clears throat> you buy it now, and they send it your way. Just because they know no one is going to bid on most of these. Uh, but there was a set of four VHS tapes that I was very excited to bid on. And I found out I won them today. And it is for a television show about a biblical superhero named Bible Man. Boy, are we in for a treat. Looks, looks like it's uh, right up my alley for the kind of schlock I like to review. People with a passion are the ones we're sticking around for. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Um, where do you get the VHSs from? Um, most of my VHS tapes I get from eBay. Um, that is typically where I go. Just because it's fairly easy to just type it, or you know, like we, they don't always label them as weird, but you, know, you can do like weird VHS tapes and you'll usually get some good hits. But then you can go outside the box a little bit and then, t you know, type in things like VHS instructional tape or VHS training video. And you'll find some, some interesting things by doing that. And there's, I, there's, there's a couple of these VHS tapes that I, I want to look into more before I buy one. But they were like independent found footage films. 
and they look really bad, and I kind of want to get one. But I also want to make sure it's within the realm of appropriateness before I do that. Yes, Justin, I, I won. Believe it or not, no one else was gunning for a Bible man. And then I kind of got down a Bible man um, rabbit hole. They, for a while, did Bible Man live. They did performances. I don't know exactly how it ran, but I guess it was like the Bible Man show, but live. And there's a VHS tape of that, so I feel like I might need to get that as well. I'm so excited for Bible Man. What are his special powers? Um, I don't know. Other than, I think I read something, because before I bid, bid on this, I wanted to see if it was something worth, you know, checking out. And I want to say, from what I remember, he's a superhero <laughs> who defeats his villains by citing scripture, <laughs> or something like that. Either way, I'm very excited to see see what it's about. And I found out they eventually so this is a live action show. This is not a cartoon, which makes it even better. But at some point in time, they stopped doing the live action show and they did an animated show. And I believe the animated show is still going. But man, I guess people really wanted their Bible man. <laughs> Bible man on ice. That would be, that would be phenomenal. I would, I would pay to see that. I would go there. Absolutely, I would. <laughs> Bible Man Arena Spectacular, yes. Um, all I remember about reading in regards to Bible Man Live <laughs> is uh, wherever I was reading this from, it might have been Wikipedia, said something to the effect of, it was notoriously not good. <laughs> I was like, well, that's, that's what I like. I like really bad stuff. Oh my God, it's not a cartoon. This is even, no, no, real. Um, shoot, what's his name? Um, there's actually kind of a semi-famous actor who's Bible man. Let me check. So he was in, he played Buddy Lembeck um, in Charles in Charge. So, I mean, fairly big show. He plays as Bible Man. <laughs> and yeah, I, I kind of haven't wanted to spoil too much for myself. So I haven't checked to see if there's any other real recognizable names. Um... But they, uh, the only reason I even found out about the Willie Ames business is that they wanted people, they wanted to be very clear to people that they had 
a known actor there because they put it like right on the cover of several of the VHS tapes. They're like, Willie Ames from Charles in Charge playing the role of Bible Man. Yeah, I am also hoping someone famous uh, randomly shows up. I'm picturing like Turbo Man and Jingle all the way, but he has God on his side. Uh, I think that's a pretty, that's a pretty accurate representation. Not known in these parts. I have to say I recognize the name, but um, I wouldn't have immediately known. He might be one of those actors that someone more my dad's age would have recognized uh, more readily. Like I said, I, I recognized the name, but I didn't know. I couldn't really attach it to anything else. But at the time I was um, bidding on this VHS tape, or th this lot of tapes, I was not aware of how many episodes were out there. So if it turns out that I like how, or I should say we like how bad they are, there are some more tapes out there. They are out there. <laughs> so I may have to look into some more. And get the entire Bible Man collection. And if that were to happen, I could very well be one of the only people on Earth with the full Bible Man collection on VHS. What an honor it would be. You know, gotta be known for something. <laughs> Dear Lord, uh, that's... That how to uh, how to cut hair at home VHS I found is going for ninety nine pounds on eBay here. Yeah, man, there are so there are so many cheap video or VHS tapes that just look awful, <laughs> just atrocious. And the thing is, you know very well that, and it's odd how time does this, but like if you were to watch some of this, some of these things in the time period they were released in, you wouldn't really think anything of it. Like, I don't know if like the average person would have been like, oh my God, there's a VHS tape on how to be good at slot machines. Like, I don't think anyone would have thought anything of it. They might not be interested in it, but they wouldn't have been like, this is going to be horribly awesome. But you give it 20 years in the oven, and all of a sudden it makes for great cringe content. I might... I'm thinking maybe more of, like, the, the, <laughs> the money shot video. The money shot video was very good. Um... Essentially teaching you how to profit off of tragedy. Yeah, I am... I have to say, I am fairly well stocked at this point. Especially <laughs> especially after this last run I made this weekend. Um, I think I currently have three videos we haven't watched and now i've got like another seven incoming so we'll be we'll be set for a while watch some interesting vhs tapes do you ever get the feeling you're bidding against other streamers for these things well i have to say most of these tapes are just buy it nows so I just win them outright if I'm willing to pay the price. Um, and there has only been 
two, two or three auctions I actually had to bid on. I won two of them, and one of them was the Bible Man one, and in both of those auctions, it was uncontested. No one else bid against me. I lost one auction. However, it wasn't an extremely bizarre tape by any means. It was the Max Headroom story. I'm a really big fan of Max Headroom, if you know anything about him. And um, I want to say it might have been the movie or either the movie or like a behind the scenes about Max Headroom. And that one, I was just more, le I was legitimately interested in viewing it. Um, and there were a couple of those out there on eBay and all of them had bids on them. So I found one that was fairly low and I was willing to pay 20 bucks for it. But it ended up going above that uh, before I had time to counter, which at that point I don't know if I would have. But yeah, I didn't get the Max Headroom tape. Can't win them all. <laughs> Um, watch early YouTube stuff that I watched 12 years ago. The cringe is here already. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, you watch stuff yeah, from even, even that time frame and man. But there's just, there's something about cringe. Like it's almost an art form. And it makes you feel alive. <laughs> and I actually, I don't know if it was like a scientific or a psychological journal. But I, I read this whole article once about the phenomenon of cringe and like why people watch it, like why they, why they enjoy watching it, why they do it. And some people who watch it don't even enjoy it. It's just like the train the train wreck effect where it's like you you can't peel your eyes off of it because you know something bad's going to happen. Um, and I want to say that they described cringe as the, the feeling of being embarrassed on someone's behalf, which I thought was a very good description of what cringe truly is. What, it's I think that's accurate like you're you're embarrassed for someone Justin don't get mad at me but I haven't watched beef show yet but I it's on my list it's on my list um I know I need to watch it I think I did catch I think I found like a couple of like short maybe highlights of it or something and it looks like just just based on that it seems like something I will indeed enjoy. But I have to be honest, I haven't been doing much for TV watching in general. The only thing I've been regularly watching uh recently would be The Mandalorian and that's just a <laughs> a once a week commitment for a half hour. But maybe I should just like put Peep Show on while I'm working. Because I do like to have stuff on while I'm working. Give it a rip. See how it goes. And I want it because you reminded me of it a while back. And I looked it up and I think I do have access to something that like there is some streaming service that I think I have access to that I can watch it on. So I can't, I can't use the excuse of not having access because I believe I do.
but I am confident that I will enjoy the show. What, did you compare it to something? Is it is it something that's kind of uh, like an in, like an in betweeners type show? Oh, you don't have to watch um, X episodes to know uh, to know if it's for you. Well, that's good. I dig on in betweeners and uh, fresh meat so much. Those are great shows. I regularly go back to the in betweeners, like just as a nice background noise show. So I've at this point I've seen it so many times I don't really need much context anymore. Fresh meat though, I would like to go back and watch. I think I originally caught that on. Hulu, maybe? But well, that's another good one. Much better than the in-betweener. Ooh. Now that's... Now that's intriguing. That is very intriguing indeed. Because, like I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan of in-betweeners. And they both have the cringe factor. Yes, yes. I, I live for the cringe. What can I say? Please say Howard with this accent. Howard. <laughs> I, I can't do it. Howard. I mean, it doesn't, it hardly even sounds like he's saying Howard when it comes out. It's been a while since I've seen it. <laughs> I love his accent. Uh, very biased peep show is probably my favorite show. Ever. Ooh. So is, um, is peep show something that is still being made and released or is it, uh, now of a bygone era? Oh man, this is, this is a tricky part to paint here. Yeah, we're gonna get some spillage. Turn on. There we go. Uh oh, music stopped. Thanks for confirming that you're still watching. Oh, this, uh, about 10 years ago. Okay, so, I mean, not, 
not too long ago. I was talking to Kate the other night and I don't know if I'll ever stop feeling like the 90s were 10 years ago. They just perpetually feel like they weren't that. Oh boy, that was a little suspect there. Um, I feel like I might perpetually feel that they were only 10 years ago. <laughs> But I guess that's just, uh, part of that is just getting old. Oh, they stopped in 2015. Okay. Okay. So even closer than I thought. Um, something that makes you feel very old I don't know what kind of uh, music radio stations you have uh, available on your side of the pond but um, you know some of the ones I'll listen to here they'll have like cl uh, classic rock stations which the tagline used to be the 80s 90s or 70s, 80s, 90s, and today. Or maybe it was the 70s and 80s today. That was nice. Now, anyway, they've got this classic rock station. Now, when I was a kid growing up listening to it, you know, there was like a lot of Led Zeppelin on there. You know, The Doors, um, Eagles that type of classic rock and I remember like a month or two ago I flipped on the station because it had been a long time since I had heard anything on there now with like Spotify and stuff I really don't listen to radio much um, but I turned it on mind you this is a classic rock station um, and they were playing Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana I was just like, uh, uh, no, why is this classic rock now? Because we're getting old, that's why. That's why it's classic rock now. But to me, classic rock is much more of a genre than an actual time frame. But that's my opinion. I know some people treat it more as a time frame. The nineties just happened. What are you talking about? <laughs> also stopped out of high, thankfully. <laughs> that's that's good, yeah. That's tough for shows to do, to stop when things are going well. Um, and I know, uh, so I feel like one show that kind of proves that point is um, The Big Bang Theory, which I know a lot of people don't like because of the way it portrays nerds. Um in a very stereotypical fashion. I tend to be a little bit lighter hearted about it and I still think it's funny. Um, but that show, man, I think has gone well past its expiration date. <laughs> uh, there's just some of those shows that hang around forever and they don't have the juice anymore. Simpsons is a perfect example. Simpsons should not be a show anymore. I'm sorry.
I was very much a fan of The Simpsons. Uh, probably for about the first ten seasons, I religiously watched it. Um, but that was back when people like Conan O'Brien were still writing for them, and they, they had a lot of their good original writers there. A couple years ago, I watched one of the more modern episodes of Simpsons. It's a totally different beast, man. It just wasn't funny. <laughs> um, and yes, I did think Big Bang ended with... What was it within the last couple of years? But it, but to me, it ended... It didn't end soon enough. <laughs> um, same with The Office and Scrubs. Yeah. Um, Simpsons has been bad for longer than it was good now. That is very true, Catherine. Um, now, of course, everyone's everyone's definition of what's good and bad is going to be different, but I felt like it was a it was a pretty strong show. Possibly beyond this, but for my personal taste, like up through about season ten. And so, what have they been going for now? Twenty some years, or did they hit the thirty year mark? Did they hit the thirty year? They might have. I thought they maybe did a had a big deal about that. Simpsons was about seven to eight great years and 22 terrible ones. Uh, on that basis, what defines a show, the good or bad? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that that's a fair assessment. I think that that is a very fair assessment. And it's weird because it feels like the show is going now for the sake it, it, oh it is 30 um i feel like the simpsons still going they are doing it for the sake of longevity at this point like i i haven't spoken to an individual who watches the simpsons in years like, I don't know anyone who's like, oh, yep, it's uh, whatever night it is. We're going to watch the new episode of The Simpsons. No one. I don't know who watches The Simpsons anymore. Does anyone watch it? Or is it just there because, you know, because, like I said, it just it's just a longevity thing at this point. They've always been there and they want them to continue being there or something. Uh, what do you think of South Park still going? Um, I think they could hang it up. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't have a good ability to assess the newer seasons because I I just haven't watched them. Um, I know they still make some good episodes, but it seems hit or miss. South Park was one of those shows. For me, anyway. Probably once again in about, you know, maybe up till about season 12 or so. They just consistently made good episodes. Like, there wasn't an episode that stood out in my mind as like, ah, uh, it really wasn't, you know, that was one of their, I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Maybe I'd feel differently now if I went back through and started watching them again. But I, I caught a couple of the newer ones in the newer seasons, and I, that I don't, I don't carry that, uh, I don't carry that feeling anymore. There's different, definitely weak episodes now, and ones that I'm like, eh, that just didn't land with, you know, that didn't, didn't land for me. The one thing I think South Park has going for it that The Simpsons doesn't is they rely heavily on being topical, which works well for them. I mean, there's they did that documentary where they show like the making of a South Park episode. They will make an episode the week it needs to be released. Like, they will workshop an episode 
and like be making it up until hours before it's hitting the air, which is just incredible to me. I don't know if they still kind of run that process, but that in itself is kind of amazing to me. That it's just that off the cuff. Um, let's see here. I think it also supports continued licensing of branded products, which still makes money. That's true. Yeah, that, that is something I didn't think of. Uh, maybe enough people watch it globally for it to keep going as well. That is another thing, too, I hadn't considered. Yeah, maybe maybe globally it still is a still is a popular show, but it's, at least we're at, in my neck of the woods. No one watches it. Um, popping back and forth between here and Ginger. It's coming along. Thank you, Chudley. Very much appreciated. Welcome, welcome. We've been watching lots of Malcolm in the Middle lately. Uh, that's held up. I, um, I used to love Malcolm in the Middle. That was a very good show, and I'm not, I'm not surprised that you said that it's held up. Um, yeah, I I used to watch that religiously. That was another good one. Fantastic show. Frankie Muniz's uh, path in life post Malcolm has kind of been interesting to follow. Um, yeah, I'll just say that. It's been interesting seeing what he has done after Malcolm. We uh, obviously know that Brian Cranston did all right for himself. You know, he was part of a little, just a little show called Breaking Band. Kind of went under the radar. Have, uh, have you and Catherine watched Breaking Bad, Justin? I feel like I've asked before. But man, is that a good show. Uh, Malcolm in the Middle is a good show. Yes, I agree. He's a race car driver now. Yeah, I thought he was doing something with uh, uh, race car driving. Didn't he get a head injury, which means he can't really remember making the show? I don't remember hearing that. Wasn't he part of a band as well? I might be... I might be thinking of Steve from Blue's Clues. <laughs> I don't know why, but I know that... I know that he did some music stuff afterwards, which is really interesting. Um, you know, because Steve don't have hair anymore. He's uh, He's gone... He shaved. Which I think, if I remember correctly was part of the, um, and I'm saying this assuming you know what I'm even talking about. I don't know if Blue's Clues was a thing in the UK. Um, it was huge here. And part of the reason Steve had to leave the show is because he was going bald. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Um, I saw he and his wife, I believe, have an all, uh, olive oil company. He seems pretty happy, cool. That's good. big fans of Breaking Bad. It's a good one. What I really want to do is catch up on Better Call Saul because Kate and I watched the first season pretty regularly and it was it was good. Um, gosh, what's his name? Uh, is it Steve Odenkirk? He's a he's an awesome actor. I love Steve Odenkirk. He's I think it's Steve. He's an awesome actor. Yeah. 
But yeah, what we watched of Better Call Saul was very, very enjoyable. Oh, Bob Odenkirk, thank you. I think Steve Odenkirk might be a part of an animating company. I think that might have been the guy who made the Thumb Wars stuff. Which, if you haven't seen the Thumb... Sh <laughs> have you guys ever seen any of the Thumb movies? <laughs> it's, um... Oh, my God. <laughs> um, There's something else. There's, like, uh, Thumb Wars, the Blair Thumb Project... Uh, there's a couple of other ones, and they're so fucking weird, <laughs> and I love them. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk. I think Steve Odenkirk might be an animator guy, but I think he was involved with the thumb stuff. Justin Watch Better Call Saul. I never got around to it. Fair enough. There's a lot of shows out there. Not enough time. Oh, wait, Justin, no. You know about them? The Cursed Thumb... Uh, thumb movies? Or do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, they're just so weird, but I like them. <laughs> or are you talking about Better Call Saul? I'm not sure. Oh, yes! Oh, you are talking about that. Yes, Bat Thumb. Yes, Bat Thumb. That's another one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen pretty much all of the Thumb movies. I wonder if he's made any recently. I feel like probably not, but maybe. Oh my god, I can't see some of these numbers. They're so small. I might just have to make <laughs> executive decisions on what color they should be. I think I watched that uh, where I was about 12 on something like MTV after midnight. Yeah, you're talking about thumbs. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember the... F we actually... Okay, this is even more sad. We had the thumb movies on DVD. Because my dad was a fan of them. Because I think the first place we saw them... My dad uh, was really big into like his DVD collection when I was growing up. Um, and so we would regular, he made like friends with the guys at the pawn shop and they would like give him deals on DVDs and whatnot. And I think we found one of the thumb movies there on DVD and that's how we, that's how we got into them. And then we looked for the rest of them. But yeah. Bat thumb. I remember that. I feel like there's another, oh, thumb tannic. Did you watch thumb tannic? That was a good one. That might have actually been the first one I watched was Thumb Tannic. Um, it was in the same slot as Celebrity Deathmatch. Celebrity Deathmatch. That, um, another great show. That is one of the shows that, uh, really got me interested in, um, stop motion animation. Um, I'm shocked that it wasn't on, uh, that wasn't on VHS. It might have been. It might have been one of those things that we, by the, <laughs> it could have been re-released on DVD, and by the time we, it, and we just found it later on. I don't know if we were kind of st staying with the current thumb trends, <laughs> if you will. 
Uh, we might have been late to the party. That's very possible. But I, I feel like they probably did have them on VHS too. But yeah, those thumb movies would be a fun watch <laughs> in the Discord. Might have to do that at some point. <laughs> Who would have thought celebrity deathmatch spark creativity anyone? Hey man. Um it, I think part of the reason why I liked the creative style of that um was I was also a big I was also a big fan of um the video game series Clay Fighter which was I think Mortal you might be familiar with it but I think Mortal Kombat but with like these clay animated figures and it had a very similar feel to that. So I think that's kind of why I was drawn to it. I just remember from Clay Fighter, I, it, to me it's kind of an iconic image because I feel like I always saw it anytime we went in to go rent movies or video games. Um, I can't remember the character's name, but there's like the snowman, like the, the devilish looking snowman on the front cover of the Clay Fighter game. I smeared it for you. Oh, nose is itchy. But yeah, I in terms of stop motion, I, you know, I'm I'd see a huge fan of things like Wallace and Gromit. That was kind of the first stop motion thing I remember watching. Um, paint dummy. Um, but there's just something about kind of the the gory, lowbrow humor of things like Celebrity Deathmatch. Like I feel like you could almost call it like Claymation Grindhouse. <laughs> um, there's just something that draws me to it. I don't know what it is. Oh, itchy nose, man. Um, but then again, I'm drawn in by a lot of lowbrow stuff, so that isn't really saying much. I'm not always particularly classy in my, <laughs> in my entertainment choices. Oh my god, gnats everywhere. Well, I'm glad I picked the number five. These fives have been keeping me pretty uh, pretty busy. There's a lot of them on this side. It's kind of nice that I don't have to flip back and forth between paints the whole time. Just kind of focus on one color and... Move ahead. Um, I was gonna ask uh, Justin because we were... I was in your stream yesterday and I mentioned I was hopping off because we were playing Drew and I were going to be playing some, um, I should have specified when I said it, we were playing some video game hockey, some NHL, but, um, 
Drew and I have, you know, messed around on ice rinks. You know, just not playing like real games of hockey, but just shooting on net and stuff. Is ice skating something you've done before? I was uh, I was thinking about that. I was wondering if that was something you've done. I'm not. I would say I'm not particularly good at it, but um, people in Minnesota. I swear, some of them learn how to skate before they, before they walk, just because hockey is very big here. Um, in terms of the NHL, Minnesota produces the most NHL players in the United States. It's a very big deal here. Um, how much Wallace and Gromit have you seen? I've seen a lot of Wallace and Gromit. Um, the first, the first Wallace and Gromit I watched, um, a lot of, I, I saw all of their shorts. I used to watch those religiously. I had them on, um, VHS. So I think, I think the first one was a grand day out. Is that what it was called? The war they went to the moon. Um, there was the wrong, uh, uh grand day out. The wrong trousers and a close shave. I think it was in that order. And then I've seen the uh, the movies as well. Which, funny enough, um, <clears throat> so Ardman Studios is who makes Wallace and Gromit, which I feel like you probably know. Um, in Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer music video, which I've mentioned being a fan of before, with the amount of stop motion in it. Um, the part of the music video where they have like a rotisserie chicken dancing a guy from Ardman did the animating for that which I thought was interesting <laughs> Catherine took me on a skate once it was a disaster I need those upright penguin things they have for kids oh no <laughs> that's okay though it, it's tough it's tough um I'm not but compared to Justin <laughs> Uh, that's okay, Justin. Skate skating is tough. I, like I said, I'm not good at it either. My my thing with skate ice skating is, I can get started. That part's easy. I can't stop. <laughs> I have a hard time stopping. Like I can't do like the fancy, um, thing where you kind of like turn to the side of your skates and grind a bunch of ice to a halt. I can't do that, or I can't do it well anyway. Um, in comparison, my youngest sister grace plays hockey for school so she's pretty good at skating she has a good time doing that a great uh a grand day out on VHS was my childhood. Yes, yes. Ah, Wallace and Gromit was so good. And, <laughs> okay, this is gonna sound really cheesy, pun intended. But one of my favorite things to do, so we had, I think at the time, only the first two were out. And I think the wrong trousers came out before a close shave, but I can't remember. But anyway. A grand day out was was there for sure, um, but I would take the VHS tapes, and then I would get a plate of cheese and crackers. You know, because that's that's their thing, and then I would watch the movie. It was a it was a fun little ritual I had when I was a kid. And man, did that moon cheese look good or what?
and the the movies are good but i i just feel and it might be nostalgia speaking but there's just a certain amount of nostalgia from the original trilogy that i feel like it's it's hard to recapture that and yeah i feel like that charm isn't as strong in the in the films but they're still they're still good they're still still a good watch still worth it Um, I just remember the robot gluing it back together. Yeah, I remember that part too. Uh, my favorite is the wrong trousers. Penguin was one of the, uh, the great villains of my childhood. <laughs> uh, I forgot about him. Yeah. When everyone mistakes the penguin with a rubber glove on his head for a chicken, maybe crack up every time. Uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, now that you're, you're, uh, mentioning these scenes I'm, I'm they're kind of uh refreshing my memory and i just maintain that yeah i there have been a couple of kind of like hoi, like snobby articles that i've read about stop motion where they're like there's no point in doing stop motion anymore it's just like it's just difficulty for difficulty's sake. And mm, I can't agree with it. There's just a certain charm to it on screen that is really tough to replicate with CGI. And um, I don't know if everyone who likes stop motion kind of views it in this way, but to me, part of the experience with those types of films, whether, whether it's a full length or a short, like, you know, Grand Day Out, um part of the part of the experience is knowing how much work went in to making it <clears throat> because it's, because it is such a how do you even put it, it it's but it's very tough and very very deliberate process But I'm also saying this as someone who has a, a big passion for stop mo. Which, speaking of which, I need to um, I need to update my alerts with some of the stop motion gifts that I made. I had fun doing that. I've got a I've got this software called Dragon Frame, and it's a stop. Oh, yeah, it's a stop motion software. Um, really nice program little bit on the expensive side but well worth it if you're into that type of thing i use that software to um i use that software to create some of the stop motion 
scenes for the opening of my when I did the Professor Cynic stuff. I used that software. Um, gave a sneak peek. They look great. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun doing it. They didn't take too long, but um, I liked it. I just love that scene in Parks and Rec when Ben gets obsessed with claymation, spends weeks working on it, and only ends up with three. Oh my God, Catherine, we, we, any almost any time I mention like that I'm working on something for stop motion, my friends make fun of me and mention that scene, and they're like, I compared it to Avatar. Oh, it's such a, oh, it's such a good scene. Makes me laugh every time. <laughs> oh my God, Catherine, you can't say that. No, it's, it's, uh, I love that, that scene. <laughs> um, oh, and, uh, Catherine with the 100 bits. Thank you so much. That, uh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I thought it, but hadn't said it. <laughs> it, it. It is such a good scene. <laughs> and and I, I can't help but think of it every time I... Uh, <laughs> every time I work on something like that. And what was the... Like one of the parts that made me laugh the most about it, it oh, what what was the song? What was the track he used for it? Um, and the best part is that you hear three seconds of that track and it just cuts. My head keeps covering it. Yeah, it kind of does. Move this up a little bit. I love Ben so much. Stand in the bed. Yes, that's what it was. Stand in the bed for you. It just cuts. <laughs> um, I'm all in on Cones of Dunshire. Yes, yes. Um, there are so many situations where I feel like Ben. Um, I don't know if Kate, Mrs. Mrs. RJ is still in chat, but... I feel like I've been compared to Ben Wyatt many times by her, uh, whether good or bad. Uh, but I feel you, Justin. <laughs> um, and I, I feel like that's uh, in a good way. I feel like that's a good comparison for you. Uh, ben would definitely be on Twitch. Um, I would love to see Ben Wyatt on Twitch with like a top-down cam like this playing Cones of Dunshire. And the thing I love about uh, uh, Ben and Leslie is that Leslie embraces who Ben is, to a degree. <laughs> I can't remember. Maybe she gets annoyed with the Cones of Dunshire stuff, but um, overall, she's just, she's just very infatuated with Ben. Well, they, well, they're both infatuated with each other, I should say. It's not a one-sided thing. Um, but just, just for, for who they are, and they're both two weird people, and it's nice when two weird people find each other. Also, Adam Scott was one of the interviews they did uh, paying tribute to Tommy Wiseau at the start of... You're right, you're right, yes. Um, they had a lot of people on there. Didn't they have... I'm trying to think now of some of the people, because for sure, he. yeah, he was on there. Wasn't... Um, is it Kristen Bell? I want to say she was on there, too. They, they kind of had just a mishmash of people. Um, 
I would like to say I'm a Leslie, but I'm way more a Ben. Maybe I'd I'd be their kid. I have Leslie's friendliness, uh, socialness, but Ben's total nerd uh, nerdness. I have Leslie's interest 100%. Uh, she was on there. Okay. Ben and Leslie are my favorite TV couple. Yeah, see, I can I can get behind that. I can uh I can totally I can totally get behind that. They are they are a very good couple. I would have to say if it was between those two I feel like I definitely identify more with Ben. I do have an interest though in politics. Um, Leslie, it just has an amount of energy though that I can only aspire to. Like if I if I could even have a fourth of the energy that Leslie has, I feel like I'd get a lot more done. Uh, we were we were rewatching recently. I had to explain to Catherine why I was so excited at uh, every senator making a cameo. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Not just the well-known ones either. Um, I don't have any of the politics interests. I care a lot, but I don't want to be in it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, and that's I think there's a difference there too, because like I I don't think I could ever see myself being a politician but i keep you know i keep up with it just because i think it's important too but it's also kind of fun to like i'm sure all of us have this to a degree with different topics but i feel like i'm kind of my friend group's political advisor which is a fun role to have because they always ask me about political stuff because they know I'm one of, one of the people in my group who actually stays up with that. Ooh, redeem Walt. Any chance of a cat sighting? Absolutely. Yeah. I will go grab the man himself. Switch to that scene. I'll be right back. Why are you always crying? You're so dramatic. You're dramatic. You've got some eye boogies, too. You're not going to like this. It's okay. It's okay. Well, Mr. Man, we can't have these in your eye. There we go. <laughs> Oh, and Justin gifted a sub to Catherine. Uh, Justin, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, 
I can't remember what month that is for you, Catherine, but you might be eligible for your three-month POG. I think you might be at the three or four. Maybe you've already surpassed that. I can't remember. Well, check, and then uh, you'll get your uh, your cat POG, which I got to design the six months because people are edging up on that real fast. Um, it's the same for me, as you might have guessed from the other combos. Yeah. Um, as John Mulaney says, I'm never going to be president unless everyone gets real cool about a lot of stuff real quick. <laughs> I, that's funny because I love John Mulaney. Um, that particular stand-up uh, routine he did was great. Meow. Here, do actually look at the camera. Mm. Poor Walt. Yeah, I'll put him down. There you go. Be free. Sit on the couch. Okay. Or leave. Whatever you want to do. Um, poor Walt <laughs> has been through the ringer. So, you know, he had his ear problems recently. And we got that resolved. But now he's been itching his neck like right here really intensely to the point where he has balded himself right there so now we and the usually when cats do that they're you know they're having like a reaction to something um and the only thing we can think of is that it might be his food so we're switching him back to one of his other foods that he used to eat, but we got to get him some stuff to put on his neck so he, um, so he stops itching it so much. Um, but yeah, poor guy. Can't catch a break. <laughs> I'm hoping if we, like, get him some medicated lotion and switch his food back, he'll, he'll be just fine. But we'll see. It's never that easy, it seems. <laughs> He's so beautiful. <laughs> yes, he he is our beautiful floof. Uh, you're so into John Mulaney. Yeah, um, I'm I'm a big John Mulaney fan. I wasn't a. I don't know if he's done any since. Mm, I can't remember. The most recent one of his that I saw, I wasn't really into. It wasn't a particularly... It just didn't land with me. But the two or three he did before that, that I saw on Netflix, I really, really enjoyed. Really good stuff. Sorry, Walt. Oh, he's fine. He's fine. We'll figure it out. He's just our little troublesome boy. You know, as I, so I'm sitting by the window here and I'm looking outside. Um, <clears throat> one thing I despise about Minnesota is how dark it gets in the wintertime. So it's getting really dark out quick now. And when I started the stream, nice and sunny, we are two hours in and it's almost pitch black out. That is one of the things I cannot stand about living here is, you know, and it's not as bad. It's not as noticeable now because I work from home so I can kind of control my work environment. So on the plus side, you know, I can sit by the window and work if I really want and get a little bit of sunlight that way. Um, but that wasn't an option when I worked in the cube farm. <clears throat> but there would be days when I would work in the office. You know, I'd get up early, 
so it's pitch black and then i'd leave work pitch black again that is miserable i cannot stand that for long when you wake up it's dark and then you go home and it's dark and you don't see a minute of sunlight it's rough um okay the whole bit about college hit me so hard i paid one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for someone to tell me to read jane austen <laughs> and then i didn't <laughs> um i like his line too about um i think it was about home ownership and he's like well i don't own the home yet we took out a mortgage so essentially it's the bank's home and they just let me keep my clothes there <laughs> like oh if that isn't the truth oh weird song just goes silent for the last minute it's bizarre a bedtime for me now have a good rest of the stream thanks uh very much for stopping in Catherine. i appreciate that a lot um and have yourself a good night and hope you have a good uh good day of work tomorrow I need to be more careful about, oh shoot, that's the wrong, oh no, it is the right thing. I need, I need to be more careful about paying attention to where I was painting because as soon as I cover up the number, if I look away, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I won't know where I was. What is uh, going on here with our, our speaker turn off? It did. I want to have it plugged into a power source though. Yeah. There we go. Okay, I know we have some other fives here. See, I took a Jane Austen class and 100% didn't finish all the books because all six in one semester was a lot. So it was just too much. Yeah, hits, uh, hits home. <laughs> I am, uh, I am very fortunate that I did not need to drop that much moolah for my education but the sentiment remains <laughs> i was uh i'm i'm very fortunate with the <clears throat> excuse me the degree that i picked that it's um you know there's a very direct job role that corresponds with it you know i got i got a degree in nursing so obviously you become a nurse um and the nice thing about nursing degrees that a lot of people don't know is that it opens up a lot of like healthcare job doors for you you know like so obviously i'm not really a nurse anymore i work in it in healthcare, but having that job experience as a nurse helped me to get get this job. So yeah, I'm very I'm very lucky with my particular degree, the options that it opened up for me. Because I know I know that's not the case for everyone, unfortunately. Uh, so that whole story resonates with me a lot. My college was also hell expensive. Laughs in British. <laughs> uh, very rude. Very rude. 
Uh, you've been a caseworker too, though, yeah, or something like that. Yes, I was a, I was indeed a case manager for uh, close to two years. That wasn't a, you know, there were, there were, when I started that job, it was better than when I left. I'll just say that. Mostly because I wasn't doing the same thing I wanted when I left that particular position, but that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot that's messed up here and tuition is higher than it used to be, but we're very lucky, honestly. Yeah. I'm gonna be in debt for at least the next 10 years. I also went to grad school, to be fair. So to give you some perspective now, obviously I, I got my bachelor's. I did not do post-grad or anything. And I also went to a state university I went to St. Cloud and my um, my bill at the end of four years was about $32,000, which I believe is on the low end <clears throat> of debt that folks have for school. Um, I focused, again, assisted by the fact that I was able to get a job in my field right away. I, in fact, I was offered a job before I left <laughs> college, so that... That shows you how badly needed that uh, field uh, field of work is. Uh, field of work is needed, I should say. Um, but I was also on a 10-year plan to repay it off. And uh, thanks to my job, I was able to pay it off in six. And when I did that, it was one of the greatest feelings in my life. <laughs> Because debt really sucks. Oh, hi, Walt. Walt's crying in the background. Come here. Come here, Walt. Walt, come here. Come. What are you doing? Oh, there you are. You're right there. Hi. You can sit up here. Here, I'll move this. There you go. There. But you can't, but here's the thing, you can't cry the whole time because I'm streaming, so. You gotta be a good boy and sit down. Sit down, relax. You're not going to get pets the whole time. <laughs> I think mine's a bit more than average, but not like much more. I think the average is 70. I went to a private and out of state school for undergrad. That's about what I'd be in the UK, but it's but uh, that's a cap, the limit, which includes the most elite schools. Damn, mine was 40K a semester, not including my scholarships, which had at least 50% of paid for. And I'm a social worker, so I'm not raking in the cash. That is just normal to me at this point. Yeah, that really sucks. Because it's an important job. Actually, when I was a case manager, um, most of my fellow coworkers were actually social workers. And they... I kind of filled like uh, I filled the role of being there for cases that had a lot of um, medical, like fit, you know, uh, uh, medical implications. You know, because we would um, we would have folks who were hospital level of care living in their home. Go sit up there, Walt. It's okay. Come here. Here, I'll move this. There. Now you got the blankie all to yourself.
I think it may be time to flip this bad boy around. So beware, you are now viewing the painting from an upside down perspective. Yeah, I love my job, but even now I'm less than two years in and already getting near burnout with the excessive load and not good pay and all that, especially this year. Um, I totally feel ya. Um, that is ultimately why I left my case managing job that I had. It's from burnout and, you know, case loads and... It's just tough having that many people dependent on you for stuff. Oh no, you're just fine, Chudley. You're you're all good. Um. But yeah, it, it's a uh, it's tough. It's tough. Because usually, if you're a case manager, you're involved with someone who things are not going well for them at that moment in time um otherwise you wouldn't be involved and then those numbers start getting kind of high for your caseload ooh gets tough The worst is like when you go home for the night. Um, oh, no worries, Justin. It's all good. Um, the worst is like you go home for the night and then you come back into the office <clears throat> and it's like you have 25 voice messages. And it's like, shit. <laughs> what happened in the short amount of time I was gone from work. And then sometimes it's several voicemails about the same thing and it's like a fun story that unfolds as you listen to them in chronological order. I have 116 clients right now. I have 37 contact hours a week and we get a whole whopping two hours of paperwork, which is nothing. We have five intakes a week, which takes a minimum of 30 minutes to an hour to write up. Yeah, man, I, I, I feel you, Chubbly. That was, so in my particular role, I would do like assessments for a program. So I would go out and perform the assessments, which in and of themselves, the visits for the assessments would usually take anywhere between on the low end an hour and upwards of three hours. And then we had to formalize the assessment when we'd get back. So that was like another like hour of paper. There's just like so much paperwork and you're expected to do all these visits. And it's like, we have a math problem here. You want me to do all this work and there isn't physically enough time to do it all. So what do you expect us to do? But I'm sure I'm preaching to the to the choir. You guys working in social care med uh, medical settings are incredible. Could never manage it. It's uh 
it, it definitely takes a specific uh, type of individual. I, I'll agree with that. Um, I finished four intakes the day before Thanksgiving, and then I came back, still had eight to do. So I got to go. I have my video chat with friends, but I'd love to talk more about this with you later. Sounds good, Chudley. Um, hope you have fun with your friends. That sounds like a good time. And we'll catch you later. Have a nice rest of your Sunday. I kept thinking today was Saturday for some reason. I don't like those weekends. I don't like the weekends where it's like... ends very quickly but a lot of times it's because you're having a having a fun time you know i got to go see drew and sarah for a little bit this weekend and that was that was a lot of fun I wonder how much easier some of this would be if I would just go out and buy like a $20 paintbrush set. The brushes they include with these are abysmal. <laughs> they uh, they clump up bad, they, the fibers on the end aren't particularly good. I feel like it would be a good investment to get just even slightly better brushes than what come with. So I struggle with some of these finer details with this little brush they included. Works okay at the start. But as with, I think, probably any cheaper brush, it begins to fray at the edges. And then I, all of a sudden, I'm laying down paint in places I didn't intend to. But, like I said, I think it still, still is going to turn out fine. I'm not worried about it, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist sometimes. slowly starting to fill in it's kind of it's kind of funny there's a lot of this five color in the hair so like all these like little little specks are starting to show up as we work through it here drew had the great idea of doing a time lapse of this once i'm complete so I'm kind of, kind of, I'm excited to do it, to work on that. It won't be like a perfect time, you know, it won't be like a time lapse, lapse where you like perfectly see it in the same position. You know, there will be some flipping and it won't exactly be in frame all the time. But, um, I think it's a good idea. There we go. That's a little bit better, I think. It's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. And it should be fairly easy to make. 
in Adobe Premiere. There we go. It's a five hiding over here. Look at that. I'm curious how well <clears throat> or how how sensitive the uh The final product is to some of the more finer details of the painting. Because there's dirt, definitely certain aspects of this painting where it's like, oh man, struggled to stay in the lines there. But I, I do kind of feel like it'll be one of those things where if you... Don't scrutinize it too close, it'll look fine from a distance, from a regular viewing angle, or I should say, regular viewing distance. <laughs> the bigger picture will come together. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking it'll still look fine. I think it'll still look good. And hey, I guess there's the aspect too that even though we're kind of coloring in the outline of someone else's painting, the little... Uh, quote, mistakes that you make on the painting will give it its own amount of individuality to a degree. So it kind of becomes its own thing to a point. So I think it's kind of cool. That is an excellent question, Justin. Do you see yourself painting on stream not by numbers eventually? Um, you know, I think that would be like end game. I think that would be a fantastic goal to aspire to. Um, you know, I, I don't think I'll ever create like really stunning art or anything, but then again, Art is so subject, so, uh, so subjective.
that, you know, and as I get older too, I, that's, that's kind of how I view a lot of art is like, it's, it, it all has value in its own way. Like uh, th there's a, there's one particular discord server that I follow that has quite a few people who do art stuff on there. And you can tell that they all have varying degrees of experience and some definitely have more experience than others. But when I, when I view their stuff, I don't really look at it through a lens of, oh, well, this person clearly is better than this one. It's like, nah, I don't really, I don't really look at it that way anymore. It's more, the, that's the neat thing about art is you're seeing, uh, you're seeing their artistic abilities as a snapshot in time. Like you're seeing what their style is at that point in time, what their background is. Um, I think that's kind of the neat thing about art. I do say, or I will say, if I ever get to that point, it is going to take a lot of painting off stream to ever build the confidence to do that because doing this it's very fun and relaxing but you don't you're not i'm not really putting myself up on the line doing this right like I, i'm just following instructions which is what makes it relaxing um but as soon as you As soon as you create something that is your own and then release it, um, I, might, I might have an overly sensitive view to, to content creation and art, but I, I do feel like you're kind of exposing yourself. Like as soon as you create something and you share it with people, you're exposing yourself, good or bad. And to me, that's like a very sensitive thing. And whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, like it sucks when people don't like <laughs> like your stuff because, like I said, you're you're exposing yourself to a degree. You're you're uh, making making yourself vulnerable is maybe a better way to say it. Um, which is why I never I've I've largely gotten over it, but. That's why I never felt like terribly comfortable sharing with people I knew personally, like the YouTube stuff I did with Professor Cynic, because I was like, I was going to be embarrassed by it. Um, you know, and what if they don't think it's funny or what if they don't like it? But I've, over time, I've kind of gotten over some of that stuff. But yeah, I think it would take a lot of practice to feel comfortable taking a shot at a painting on stream and I don't really know what my style is either because I'm not a particularly artsy person by nature um so I'd have to I feel like I need to explore that a bit um would you consider following a Bob Ross or something as a bridge following instructions but freehand um I have always wanted to try but most Mostly because Bob Ross is just an incredible human being. Um, but yeah, that, that might be a good um, kind of bridge gapper, as you said. Um, how did it feel putting that out on YouTube without personal feedback, if you don't mind me asking? It's tough. <laughs> um, because the thing is... For the most part, I wasn't getting good or bad feedback. It just was going into the void. And I think this was the wrong way to look at it. But it's when you do that, it's hard not to feel like people don't like it. Because you put it out there and nothing happens with it. And you, you just like naturally kind of feel... Like it's an invalidation of what you've done because you're like, oh, no one watched it. So clearly it's not good, which is the wrong mindset with a monster like YouTube. A lot of it 
is out of your control if someone sees it. I mean, there are things you can do to improve it, your, your chances of being seen, but a lot of it is just out of your hands. So it was very tough to just put it out there. And I think that was ultimately part, again, right, wrong, or otherwise, part of the reason why I stopped doing those videos is because there was no, there was no sense of validation with them because I would spend over a hundred hours on a video that I thought I did a decent job on, release it. And then over the course of like a year, it'd be like 30 views. And again, I shouldn't take that personally. It's just how YouTube works. Um, and a lot of it too, like when videos are certain content creators blow up, a lot of it is just being in the right place at the right time. I, th I truly believe. So I don't think it was even necessarily, you know, there's a lot of things to factor in is what I mean. Content discovery is the worst. I genuinely enjoy them for whatever, uh, whatever it counts. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I would say in terms of content creation, my, um, my passions do lie a bit more in video production maybe as opposed to streaming. So I would, but, sh but streaming, I'm having a great time. Oh boy, I botched that. Um, that's a botched toe. Oh boy, that's smeared everywhere. I did not want that to happen. Okay. Um, what was I even saying? Oh, um, content creation. Um, like I'd like to get back to making videos and I've had some ideas. It's most, at this point, it's mostly just executing. And the real nice thing about if I give it a shot now is I have at least a small group of people who might be, <laughs> might be interested in trying it out. So I have that going for me now, which is, which is nice. It's one of the uh, things about building a streaming community that's kind of nice that you don't think about. You kind of get like a, to an extent, a built-in audience who might give your stuff a shot. Oh, I am really going to need to clean up that section. Oh, well. Go back when it's all dried up. All right. Let's see here. I'm just going to check on something real quick. I really gotta gotta do some cleaning on my desk here, my office area. Well, friends, I think that's where I'm going to stop it for the evening. Made some good progress on this bad boy. Um, I will... I'm sorry, trying to close some stuff here. I will be back uh, next week here. I'll get my schedule out soon. 
um, let you know what I'm up to shortly here. Um, but I hope you all have a nice rest of your Sunday. And, um, yeah, well, actually, I missed a comment here uh, from Justin. I've really taken lately to doing something you must have done to stumble on Chef, deliberately finding people just starting out streaming with more unusual games, saying hi and hanging out for a bit. Yes, that is exactly how we found Chef. I was actually at Drew and Sarah's with Kate, and we were just looking for small streamers, and we found some really um, cool people doing that, so I highly recommend that if uh, you have the time. Um, but yeah, we're going to head out for the night, uh, give some love to Ginger, and I will see you all soon. Bye now.